My camera doesn't have much longer for this world, so we're very zoomed in on my face because that's the only way that it will focus is when you zoom into this very particular little position. Other than that, it's just all blurry. That's, that's why we're so up close and personal. Anyway, today is what I watched in February. I'm doing these monthly now, which is pretty cool, so I hope, uh, I hope you guys don't mind. First of all, this was actually on January 31st, but I forgot to log it. So we're going to say, first, I watched this short horror film on YouTube called The Back Rooms. And it was actually really freaking cool. I love a good horror short. I'm hopefully going to watch more of those. I don't know if I'm always going to log them on here, though, because they're so short. I don't read creepypasta, but it's based on this creepypasta. Um, but it's about, like, liminal spaces and, you know, sort of a Lovecraftian entities so it's super cool next i got all academic and watched a documentary all the colors of jalo it was very informative but it was not it was definitely not exciting it was kind of just like a whole bunch of almost academic information on the subject but it's still i think a really important doc to put out there because they talk to a lot of important figures from the genre i made a little note of people that i was particularly happy to see martino ercoli fennec navarro fulci nicolodi argento boucher hilton and Lindsay all appeared well not fulci but it was like a recording of fulci anyway all those people had something to say and a whole bunch more people had something to say in this documentary. It was really cool. There are more Jalo docs out there that I definitely need to watch. Because this was not like, whoa, exciting or anything. But it was like worth a watch, I suppose. It was kind of like a lecture. Next, I re-watched Forbidden Photos of a Lady of Suspicion. I guess I just watch that every month. Okay, next. After seeing All the Colors of Jalo, Ernesto Gastaldi was talking about libido. And from how he described it, I was like, I need to see this. Like, I think it's because he was talking about how low budget, almost no budget this movie was. I was intrigued. I love no budget stuff. So like I've been saying, 60s Jolly aren't really my jam, but libido, that shit was awesome. I loved this movie. <laughs> it's black and white. It stars... Giancarlo Giannini. Did I say that right? It was just so good. It was it, it was a little darker than I had anticipated and I loved that about this movie. It was just beautiful. Oh, and Brigitte, one of the characters in this movie, she was hilarious. I appreciated her so much. I love a good, funny female Jalo character. I don't know. She She was great. I love libido. That made it onto my top favorites. Next, I watched Demons 2, which was made possible by the mayor, aka M Zombie Punk, who uh, sent me some DVDs. So that's why I was able to watch Demons and Demons 2. I enjoyed watching Demons 2 much more than Demons. Now, it's probably because I, I was able to just kind of relax into it. I think I was expecting something too different from Demons 1. But from Demons 2, I was like, it's just about the ride. It's about the experience. And it was a really fun watch. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Next, I watched Fatal Frames. This is a Jalo from 1996. I loved this movie. I was telling my friend Danielle, I did not realize how badly I needed long hairy hunks in my Jolly until now. This is like an orange and blue psychedelic overstuffed 90s fever dream. It is wild. It's a mess. Like there's a lot going on. There's all kinds of themes mushed together and like it's crazy and I love it. Some reviews have a problem with like the main character lady and yeah I mean I get it but I'm able to look past her <laughs> And her acting and all of that because this movie is just bomb like I want to own this on DVD <laughs> if you have seen Fatal Frames let me know let me know I'm not alone in this because I got on and read reviews on Letterboxd and stuff and people just hated it 
people are just tearing it apart. And I'm like, of course. That's usually how it goes for me. I love something and then it turns out everyone else hates it. Not that I care, but <laughs> Fatal Frames was fantastic. Also, Donald Pleasance is in Fatal Frames. It, not for any real reason. He doesn't really do anything in the movie, but he has this awesome, there's this awesome little like wink to Halloween. <laughs> I don't even know if it's legal, but if you know, you know what I'm talking about. Next, you, if you've been watching these, you know, like sometimes I watch the most random documentary. So I watched this documentary called Emma Wants to Live is about anorexia. I'm not like really that disturbed by that subject matter, but I found this really disturbing and upsetting and sad. It was like really fascinating and really good, but I will agree with other reviewers who say that there wasn't enough focus on like the, the girl experiencing, like the girl going through it. There wasn't enough focus on her. It was just more about like her treatment and not about like her and her why and how she was really feeling. But it was really good, really sad. Next, I have not seen very much John Waters in my life. So I was talking to my coworker about it and he was like, you should watch Serial Mom. And I was like, sure. Okay, why not? So I put on Serial Mom. That movie was awesome. It was so good. I am a Kathleen Turner fan now. It was hilarious. I guess it's a comedy. I wouldn't call it like a horror comedy, but it's a comedy that involves killing. And it was so fun. It was just like really polished, really well-rounded, really balanced, just like a good time. I, I guess, I don't know if it was like in theaters or theatrical release or whatever, but it was just like a Hollywood movie that was just really 90s, really good. Has Ricky Lake in it, has Suzanne Summers make his own appearance, Matthew Lillard's in it. Never heard of it before, but it was fantastic. I would definitely watch that again. Next, I'm trying to get an education because I haven't seen too much John Carpenter either. So I watched They Live. It was really good, really fun. I think this is a like a must see for everybody. It's one of those movies, I guess, kind of like The Matrix that you can watch and apply it to reality. You're like, oh my God, that's what's happening now. You know, so it was one of those movies, but super fun. Next, okay, February's Black History Month. I did not get enough black cinema in my life during that time, but I did make sure to watch Blackula. Black exploitation is something I really want to dig into more, but up until now I had only seen Blackenstein, and now I watched Blackula. I loved Blackula. I mean, I understand the hype. It was so good. It was so like comforting, and it did this awesome job at blending this like funky and groovy 70s with sort of like classic gothic vampire themes. So it was this awesome blend of the two. I thought it was a great story, great characters, like it was just awesome. I had a good month, you see. I would totally own Blackula. I would love to watch that again. I don't know why movies like this don't get more attention. <laughs> maybe I'm just not hanging out with the right people or something, but, or maybe it's because it's like B-movie stuff, you know, and, and that's not like what most people want, but I thought it was so good. Next, I re-watched Enigma, partly because I was making my video about why I love Enigma. Then in continuing my John Carpenter education, I watched The Thing. Yes, for the first time, The Thing. You guys have heard me confess already that I had never seen The Thing. One of y'all even asked if I would do a video about The Thing after I watched it. I don't know if I will do that. Um, holler again if you really want it, but it was Fantastic. I really, I didn't know anything about this movie. So we're in Antarctica. It's snowing. There's like this element of being stranded and the snowy and ice. Like I love cold movies. And then it's like an alien sci-fi movie, but it's not like a conventional alien, I guess you could say. And there's a lot of body horror and, and this like element of you don't know who to trust. It, it was super fun. I mean, I understand why it's considered such a staple and such a classic. It's definitely a must-see for horror fans and sci-fi fans or whatever. I thought it was wonderful. We had a really good time 
watching the thing and now I'm a real woman. Next, I had to go back to the Jallo, so I watched the House of the Yellow Carpet. This was an 80s Jallo and it was good. It was better than I thought. Like it is not a conventional Jallo as Jallo Submarine has said recently, but it was still like much more fascinating than I thought it would be, much more watchable than I thought it would be. I'd call it probably a solid installment. <laughs> Next, I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't watched anything like super disturbing. I like to have at least one like ultra disturbing gem in these monthly recaps and I don't have anything yet. So I was looking for a couple of cannibal movies that like the title had stuck in my head, but I couldn't find like a free way to watch any of those. But then I found a free way to watch Cut and Run, which is a Deodato film. And uh, it's kind of like branded as a cannibal film, but it was not a cannibal film. It was a drug slash crime movie that involved being in the jungle and like native people in the jungle. Um, it wasn't disturbing. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I was like, that was not enough. That was not enough. So I, I looked up a video that was like disturbing movies that are on Tubi. Cause I don't have time to dig around. Like just tell me what is free and what is disturbing. So I decided to pick this movie called Shram by the guy who did Necromantic. Now I've never seen Necromantic. I've watched like detailed reviews and I think it's like, I think it's pretty cool. Okay, like the story is cool. What the guy's getting at is cool. What these, the movie stands for, it's cool. Like I'm here for it. I don't know if I'll watch it. I probably will at some point. Anyway, but Shram is by the same guy. It's from 93. Anyway, uh. I would just say don't watch it. <laughs> just don't watch that. It wasn't some nasty shit. <laughs> I'm a sick, sick person. <laughs> How can I explain this? It is not a spoiler for me to tell you what this man does to himself. Let's just say he takes a nail and he takes a hammer and he hammers something to the table. Something that's attached to his and they show it. And there's a whole bunch of other just like gross stuff, like gross. But there's this other cool part in the movie where this guy and this girl, the main characters, they're like walking home and there's a homeless guy. <laughs> this is so like rated R. Okay, there's this homeless guy or something sitting on the side of the road and the people walk past and then the camera just stays where it was like looking at this homeless guy and then he shoots himself. I don't want to say that was cool. It was just really impactful. The way it's shot is cool, very grainy, it has a cool look, very eerie soundtrack. I mean, I haven't seen Necromantic but I feel like it's the same kind of vibe. It's just a movie that you put yourself through and that's why you watch it. <laughs> and I did it! I did it for you guys. Hey, though, give me some recommendations of disturbing movies, like something that will traumatize me a little bit. I, um, I like to do at least one a month for entertainment purposes. Next, I watched Death Will Have Your Eyes. It's a Jollo that was just pretty, uh, soapy, I guess. It wasn't like a conventional, like, gloved killer slashing people one by one who's the killer it wasn't really one of those it was like i said one of the more dramatic soap opera types of jolly but it was good next i watched another youtube short called the other side of the box i thought it was a great story and it was really cool i just thought some of the acting was like kind of weird <laughs> we'll wrap up this month with what i watched yesterday <laughs> A new release. Hey, maybe that's something I should do. A new release every month and a super disturbing movie every month. Make sure I get those in. Then I can do like a Jala every month, which won't be a problem. And then maybe like a must see. Like the thing is a must see. So I don't know. Maybe I can like make sure I hit certain categories every month. Let me know. Anyway, so the last movie I watched this month was a new release. It was Hellbender on Shudder. This movie was awesome. How many times am I going to say awesome? This movie was grand. It was like a, I guess, a folk horror. It was a witch movie. 
Um, it was like a pagan movie. Heavy emphasis on nature, the natural world. It's hard to know what to say about it. The It's a sensory experience. The birds chirping, the water running, like the wind blowing. The This looks like it's filmed in the Pacific Northwest. I haven't read about this movie or anything, but the nature is just very lush. There's this feeling of just total isolation, but also comfort at the same time. And it's about some witch shit, some like dark shit. And it was so much fun. It was so much fun also because the acting was really weird. If you have seen it, you, you probably know what I mean, but I loved it. That one is a keeper for sure. Okay, there we go. That's all the movies I watched. Not as hard as January, but I still had a pretty steady flow. Um, I also watched the entire series of Recess, a Disney cartoon that I used to watch as a child. So I went through all of Recess as well. Oh, Arthur. Okay, I watch Arthur like regularly. Pretty much every weekend is when I'm watching it. This month also Arthur ended after 25 years. So I watched a lot of the marathon. They had a, a marathon on in February. And I watched the last episodes. Any Arthur fans on here or am I, you know, talking to an empty room? The last episode of Arthur was actually not as bad as I thought it would be, even though they made adult Arthur look like a total fool. But it's okay. Yeah, so Arthur's done. That's pretty much it, except that I'm always watching American Dad, Family Guy, The Simpsons, King of the Hill. Like, we're always watching that stuff. But yeah, that's what I've been up to, what I've been watching. What did you watch this month? Any new releases? Do you have any recommendations for me? If so, Please leave them below. I think that's all I have to say. So, um, I'll be seeing you around. Goodbye!